Welcome. This is Dr. Gary Salton, Chief of R&D and Creator of IOP Technology. This video reports on research into the engineering personality. This is not new ground. A 1954 article in The Bent, a publication of the Engineering Honor Society, outlined behavioral characteristics found to be common among engineers. Since that time, thousands of publications have elaborated, amended, or simply just repeated these original findings. So, why all the interest? Well, personality judgments affect decisions. They are a standard set of expectations that guide our interactions with each other. They influence organizational policies, they affect how work is distributed, they guide training and development decisions, and on and on. They can enhance or harm. It is a matter of substance that deserves some attention. So, what does IOPT have to offer? Well, it offers the disciplined, rational kind of thinking engineers like. You know, a root cause explanation of personality. Ratio measurement, so that exact comparisons can be made to inform decisions. A logically coherent what causes what and why framework that can be built upon and actually used in practice. IOPT accomplishes this and other things by using a well-recognized engineering tool. So, let's start using it. Behavior is simply an output. Newton's first law, as well as common sense, tells us there must be something causing that output. An obvious source of that something is input from the environment. And in order to have any effect, that input has to be interpreted. It has to be processed. And what we get is the basic information processing model, but with a twist. Humans are self-directing creatures. IOPT accommodates this by using dynamic relationships to adjust for things like shifting focus, changes in objectives, and the like. If you are interested, the first five minutes of the Team Tension video has a thumbnail summary of how the dynamics of IOPT work. We applied our revised model to a sample of 2,385 professional non-management engineers. From 178 firms, who cited 89 specialties in their titles. Most work in the United States, but 30 other countries are also represented. In all, this is a sample that probably can be trusted. And here is what we found. The line here represents the strength of commitment in each of the four basic IOP categories. Each category represents a unique combination of input and output elections. Let's use the engineer's dominant HA style to show how these categories work. A person's intended output defines the kind of information that is to be sought or accepted. For the HA, the intended output is complete understanding of the issue in question. Next, a specific approach must be selected. Usually, there's more than one available. Then, specific variables must be identified. Not every variable in a particular approach is equally relevant. The gathering of information from the environment then begins. Analysis relies on clear thinking, so mental tests are run to confirm that the right approach and correct variables are being used. Contingent possibilities must be accommodated. A whole bunch of what-ifs must be considered. Communicating the reasoning and results is the next challenge. There is usually a lot of knowledge to condense. The deep understanding and complexity creates decision hesitancy. Exposures to overlooked items, data corruption, and the like are vividly apparent to someone who has invested heavily in analysis. There are a lot of reasons to be hesitant. The net result for someone using the HA strategy is comprehensive understanding. Now let's move to the human side of the equation. Selecting the right approach requires thoughtful introspection. This is not something other people can see. Identifying the variables and weighting them involves careful selection, lots of thought. But again, very little of this is displayed to others. Next comes application, collecting data and testing it. Diligent, thorough investigation becomes a visible behavior. Taken together, an outside observer sees a methodical, measured work pace. No one saw all of the work being done, all those mental gyrations. If they had, they might have judged the work pace as a bit more intense. 
Next comes the what-if testing. People see far-fetched contingencies being considered and or exhaustive iterations being run. A likely inference is that our engineer is inherently diligent and prone toward perfectionism. Now results need to be communicated. The massive knowledge accumulated in this process is likely to be visible to all. An outside observer would likely declare our engineer as having intellectual tendencies. Finally, an awful lot of work has been done, much of which cannot be seen by outsiders. Any challenge calls into question the entire interlinked body of effort, most of which is unseen. Is the engineer's sensitivity to criticism any surprise? The traits inferred from this kind of behavior are a large part of what goes into a personality. And they rest on a simple, almost self-evident principle. Actions occur in sequence and are interdependent. Each prior action facilitates or frustrates subsequent actions. In other words, a cascade governs behavior. And each of the three remaining strategic styles will have its own behavioral cascade and create its own traits. These combine to create a unique personality for each individual. The higher the average strength of a style in a group, the greater is the degree of visible commonality in that group. This commonality is what comes to characterize the engineering personality. If you are interested, this eight-minute video tells you how the various styles are selected in practice. But for now, let's get back to the numbers. Let's compare engineers with over 8,000 non-management professionals from eight other staff areas. This can give us an idea of just how unique engineers are. Let's start with the engineering profile, and then post the profiles of the eight other staffs. Notice the geometric similarity? The reason is that every profession has a large predefined component. Accountants keep ledgers, lawyers write contracts. These recurring responsibilities are patterned activities that are predefined to some degree. They make use of the same structured HA and LP approaches used by engineers. But don't get the idea that every job shares this geometry. The 1,253 consultants from all areas in our database turn this geometry on its head. And our database of 86 engineering vice presidents, executive vice presidents, and chief engineers also look quite a bit different. Now, back to the comparisons. Engineers are at the top of the pile in their analytical HA score. Most navigate life by investing heavily in understanding before acting. And they tend to be at the bottom of the pile in the spontaneous RS style. They put the least stock in just getting things out of the way using anything at hand. These pronounced positions are enough to set engineering apart from other staffs. But there is more. Only accounting and logistics exceed engineering in a methodical, careful, and deliberate LP style action. And have a lower commitment to the speculative idea generating RI style. So, even in their secondary style choices, engineers tend toward the more pronounced of the postures. Standing out like this is a good way to get your behavioral quirks noticed. But there is still more. To get at it, we need the exact measurement capabilities of IOP technology. Each of the nodes on the engineering profile is an average. It has a strength distribution. Let's take a deeper look at the HA node. One thing immediately jumps out. We've got a skewed distribution. Over 50% of the sample registers high on the HA scale. And only about 15% falls in the lower categories. Now personality is an attribution based on what people notice. And people notice the unusual. Even though about half of the engineers have a medium or lower level of HA, the engineers that are going to stand out are those with high levels of commitment. The result is an exaggerated characterization. The same kind of skew arises in the other dominant engineering style, the methodical action-oriented LP. But here, the skew is much less pronounced. The net effect of the skew on the overall profile is to magnify the characteristics of both dominant styles. Both rely on some kind of predefined pattern, the HA on predefined thought, 
and the LP on predefined action. This creates the common pattern that gives rise to the traits cited by Goshen in 1954. His reasoning is questionable, but the qualities he cites are essentially correct. They are also woefully incomplete. Using the human information processing model and the behavioral cascade, we can construct an unending stream of coherent traits applicable to almost any subject. For example, the IOP website has a large number of snowflakes available free of charge. These are templates that outline behavioral qualities on such subjects as corporate culture, general culture, learning, communications, emotions, and the like. Here is how they work. Let's start with the general behavior snowflake. The snowflake tool was designed to be used with an IOP graphic. The graphic measures and makes use of the areas in the various quadrants. But for present purposes, let's just simplify things and make use of the style axes. The nodes on the profile relate to the descriptions on each axis. The logical processor or LP style and the analytical HA style. These are IOP's first order descriptive variables. Now, personality judgments typically consider the entire range of behaviors represented by all four IOP styles. But for engineering, the strength of the HA and LP styles are likely to overwhelm the peripheral styles. These two styles, HA and LP, combine to create a second order description. This is what the IOP quadrants were designed to measure. For engineers, the dominant styles combine to create what IOP terms a conservator pattern. Now, conservator is not a political judgment. It refers to conservation, preserving and protecting items of proven value. The likely attribution arising from this pattern will probably include things like a low risk stance, a detail sensitive orientation, a skeptical attitude, and a focus on excellence rather than adequacy. Sound familiar? Here is an example of a snowflake that focuses on the probable impact that an average engineer is likely to have on others. On the positive side, people see a principled, efficient, confident, and productive person. But if the engineer is rubbing someone the wrong way, they are likely to see the negative side of exactly the same behavior. A plodding, obstinate, defensive, and overcautious person. Take your pick. What you see depends on where you stand. Snowflakes are a practical tool built on a solid information processing foundation. If you are trying to manage image and expectations, or are looking for guidance on a decision that hinges on a particular quality, they can be very useful. But they are not the only tools that can be built. Take a look at this video if you are interested in seeing how information processing affects some of the parameters of creativity. Here is another application of IOPT. Engineers work in networks. The content and flow of information differs in the various segments of the network. Engineers have to be allocated to meet these various demands. And one of the tools used to do this is personality. Unfortunately, personality is a qualitative variable. The same quality can mean different things to different people. In addition, the same trait can have different information consequences. For example, you can be detail sensitive at a systems level and sloppy operationally. IOP can translate its information processing measures into personality traits. So we've lost nothing if we do a little substitution, but we've gained a lot. We can now more precisely fit the engineer to the demands of the job. This effectively leverages individual diversity to create a better functioning system. However, there are times when these diverse individuals must be woven together to function as a team. Personalities must be matched in such a way that they complement each other. That is a lot easier to do using IOP technology. IOP's racial measurement can consolidate individual profiles to create meaningful group quantifications that can use exactly the same tools we use for assessing individuals. These tools facilitate orchestrated responses to the actual application of engineering in the real world. And they have been tested in the real world. 
They have been used for over 20 years by thousands of corporations and institutions on a worldwide basis. IOP works in practice as well as in theory. Simple principles rigorously applied can position engineering to better manage expectations, image, and performance within the profession. Thank you for viewing this video. If you would like to learn more about IOP technology, please visit our websites at IOP.com or OEinstitute.org. Both sites have much more information on IOP and the areas where it has or can be applied. Thank you again for your interest in IOP technology.